Hey all here, OS Reviews. Over the past few months, we've taken a closer look at several DIY-based products, including a self-driving car that comes in a kit and uses the Arduino R3, along with other subscription box services like the Creation Crate, also using the R3 to create things like a mood lamp, for instance. And today we're taking a look at another example. This is by a company called Cano, and it's perhaps the coolest one that we've seen yet because it's a fully working laptop or kind of computer that you can create by wiring all of these components together. So similar to those other products, this will allow you to learn more about EE, about electrical engineering, in addition to programming once all of this is completed. So this Kano Complete Kit here sells for $200, which really isn't bad considering you have this pretty large display. It includes a wireless keyboard and trackpad. So the value of the computer itself, I would say, you know, is around $100, $150 by itself. So having this entire kit that uh, teaches you kind of the process is definitely, I think, worthwhile. Taking a closer look at the packaging here, it's very colorful. It says simple steps, build it yourself. I believe this one uses a Raspberry Pi and you're able to then connect to the internet using Wi-Fi and as a result you can access Google Maps, WhatsApp, web browser, watching YouTube, and Wikipedia. So it does give you a pretty functional ex experience in addition to some custom software that allows you to program and uh, access Kano's App Store, I believe. Connect a battery that has billions of moving electrons and inside creating electricity to power your computer. On the top it says let's go and we just have a few kind of instruction manuals, including a few stickers that you get with all the alphabets that you can use to actually put onto the body of the computer, pretty cool. And we also have the actual instruction manual or booklet over here, which goes through all the steps and is fully colored in the terms of the diagram, which is what makes the assembly process really so simple that even kids should be able to complete this project. Then below this phone, we have all the components, including the shell, which is again made out of plastic that holds everything together for the computer, made out of acrylic plastic, it's transparent. On the back we do have a USB cable that's pre-inserted that's for charging only, which I think is pretty cool. There's a USB uh, nano receiver that you need to plug into one of the USB ports on the computer for the wireless process to work, and there's also a dedicated power switch on the side. Next we have what looks like the Raspberry Pi 3 located right on the edge over here and if we take a closer look there, again about the same size as something like an Adreno R3, but the Raspberry Pi is a more versatile and powerful uh, microprocessor, kind of microcomputer, because it has more storage capacity, has a faster CPU, and uh, more I.O. as well right out of the box. Underneath here we have additional components including what seems like a USB hub and we also have what looks like the battery pack which is very interesting, it looks like a power bank almost. And the rest are basically components that we'll be using along the way, including a power switch and lifting the foam up. The last layer down includes just another micro USB cable for power, as well as the display itself, which is partially assembled already. The first step that we have to do is really remove the micro SD card from the larger card holder and insert it onto the back of the Raspberry Pi. So this is where the slot goes in. And next we're just gonna connect the power key onto the Raspberry Pi directly. So inserting these pins down over here. And next we're just gonna insert the Raspberry Pi onto the mold, which has been built onto the back of the display here. So if you're noticing, this is a very simple assembly process. Jump cut of five minutes and we've completed the assembly. So again, it's very simple, just snapping these blocks into place, keeping the wires nice and tidy. Final step is really just to snap the acrylic plate on the back of the computer. So that's what our finished Kano computing kit looks like. You can see all the parts underneath, definitely looks pretty cool, and has enough space as well for it to just stand upright. On the side here, we can see this is what the USB ports look like. And on the other side, we have access to the power key, which is actually pretty clicky and easy to tap. There's also the speaker. All right, let's go and try powering this on. Here's what the back of the computer looks like when it's turned on. We have other LEDs as well from the USB hub and also from the Raspberry Pi. So it does create a pretty cool effect, especially in the dark. And after initially booting it, it just says, follow the right rabbit, type CD rabbit hole. Let's peel back the protective film on the display here. So we get this pretty cool animation with all this binary ones and zeros. And it says, hello, what is your name? You can enter this here. Let's just try typing something like OS reviews. Nice to meet you. More interesting animations here. That's probably actually a diagram for the Raspberry Pi. Say hello. 
did you hear me? So we did hear a sound. And now we can try using code to make art. Circle 100. And uh, we can try out all the sensors, including activating the microphone, which it seems like we have to do this manually for the first time. Now we can make some noise, such as snapping sounds from the sound sensor over here. You can see that it's displaying that individualization, so it's working. The keyboard here is a little bit small, so maybe it really is better suited for kids because some of the keys, again, are not quite as large as what you're probably used to on a full desktop. Touchpad seems all right, though. Once connected, it's going to tell us to create an avatar, so let's just tap on OK for now. All right, we're in, and there's a little bit of an animation music as well. So this, again, does have a pretty attractive, easy-to-use interface, even though it isn't a touchscreen. So that might be something kind of cool to consider in a next-generation model. But we do have these simple tiles that represent different apps, including kind of coding practices. We can make art using code. There's also a version of Minecraft on here. We can also play some very basic games. There is Scratch. So again, BYOB is indeed the language that you get. Now there is also a classic desktop mode, so you can change the interface around a little bit, and this is what it looks like. It's more similar to something like Windows, for instance, with the icons that you can drag and drop, and there is a dashboard on the bottom that you can now click to go through apps. And in this particular mode, we also have a task manager, so you can even look through the CPU usage, memory usage, and what everything is going on underneath. So there are a few things to observe. First of all, the story mode is kind of the main game that Kano has designed here and it feels a little bit like almost Pokemon, except the games and challenges that you're supposed to do all have to do with coding. Uh, so you're in this virtual world. Let's turn on the volume a little bit. The speakers on here do get pretty loud, but they're not the best quality I'd say in the world. So for instance, you can talk to people, and if you want to talk to this person, you can just click, and you're able to, uh, let's say, play a game or a challenge. You can then move on to a different part of this park, and then just complete uh, various challenges along the way in this virtual world. So let's exit out of this. The rest of the games are not quite as complicated, so there's Pong and Snake, which are pretty classic titles, and, you know, graphically they are, you know, pretty primitive, but you are able to actually create commands, so they are written in Python, so you can do something like Python Snake Help and from here, you're able to see things like you can actually change the speed of the snake, you can change how many lives that you have, you can change the background just by typing out uh, these other letters at the end of your Python command. So here's just this very simple game of snake. You can see how everything is just visualized as these uh, very interesting characters, parentheses, and you're able to then uh, pretty quickly gain levels, but if you hit one of the walls, you die. Now for Pong, instead of using Python, you're going to learn a little bit about BYOB or Snap, attaching them onto each other to kind of customize uh, the game. Tap on enter so that includes the forest in the background as well as uh, the yellow accents for the balls. So we can, again, basically play against a computer. Again, another very classic game. If you want to have the background be completely black, that would be, uh, again, slightly more kind of retro, primitive looking. So you can customize it with this. And you can tap here actually just to return. And again, challenge is completed, so you gained uh, certain experience points and you're able to then do other things like make the ball larger and smaller, so it gets more and more complex. And really it's the same story with the other apps on here as well, such as drawing and creating different uh, art using code as well. Uh, the numbers here just correlate to their positions on this coordinate grid. So for instance, 100 moving up, negative 100 moving down, it creates this flag design. One of my favorite mini games is actually the Terminal Quest. It teaches you how to navigate around a terminal or a command line in Windows. So for instance, we have our kind of computer here, and then we have a dollar sign, and afterwards we can tap something like LS, for instance, to take a look at everything in this current level of the file structure, and then move things around. The game is pretty cool because it's actually a mystery, it's a disappearance case, and everyone around the town is disappearing one by one. And then you're supposed to move around the house and then move around the town to find people and solve the riddle. Some of these other apps on the second screen are actually correlating to the other products in Kano's line. So the pixel art and the motion kit are sold separately, so you probably need to pick those up to access them fully. Uh, there is access to basic utility things like a calculator as well. There's Code Academy, which basically is just a URL to the website, and you can set up an account from there and watch 
watch tutorials to develop your skills at your own pace. And you can also go into a real terminal over here if you just want to take a look at what's inside the Kano computer yourself. There is also a free kind of office here so you can use it to create Word, Excel, and PowerPoint documents. Taking a look at YouTube and web browsing. First of all, the Wi-Fi reception seems decent, but it's not going to be as strong as on a regular laptop, perhaps because it's integrated onto the Raspberry Pi, so there's not a huge amount of space. Uh, so you do want to be slightly closer to the router than perhaps on a conventional laptop. And right-clicking on the mouse pad, you can really tell that this is the block element using kind of the built-in ad block with Chromium. We can full screen it and then tap on play. If you want to, you can just go into the regular browser, again using Chromium, so you do have tab browsing, you can open up multiple ones, but because of the one gig of RAM built on in, I wouldn't recommend having more than five uh, tabs open at once if you want a faster experience. As of the New York Times, again a pretty complex site uh, with lots of videos and ads, scrolling elements, but it seems to be rendering alright, so for things like reading, it does a pretty decent job. Again, video playback, you have to wait a little longer, but also not too bad. Overall. Uh, a pretty capable browser considering that uh, this is again more meant as an educational tool. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the Kano Complete Computing Kit. Overall I would say this is a very clever idea just because it teaches you not only the hardware of assembling a PC with all the components, especially for kids and for kind of first time makers and hackers, but also the software is really interesting. It's running on a version of Linux, teaches you things like how to use a command prompt, also teaches you how to program uh, very simple games. Slight downsides would be the fact that the keyboard is a little bit small, but then again it's probably targeted towards kids with smaller fingers, so that's okay. Um, it does actually work pretty well as far as the wireless range is concerned. You can hold it pretty far away from the unit and it still works. So for instance, you can set this up at a couch and you can just hold it in your hands and you can just browse around using the trackpad and everything is still quite responsive. You can of course still get a little bit of productivity done and again, the design itself is also very cool. The fact that it's transparent, you can see all the parts underneath and customize it with stickers, definitely makes it a pretty interesting conversation starter just putting it onto a desk. So this is definitely something that I would recommend if you're just interested in EE, if you're interested in CS, and uh, especially if you want it as an educational purpose uh, kit, then I think that this is definitely one of the better ones in the market when it comes to ease of use, as well as having an entire ecosystem that's designed from the ground up. You can check out more details in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews, that's been a closer look at Takano, the complete computing kit.